Hi, and welcome to another episode of Las Vegas Advisors Weekly Update with Anthony and Andrew. Today is Wednesday, November 17th. And, you know, last week we were talking about the sale of the Mirage, but um, we didn't say who the potential buyers are. Um, who do you think the potential buyers are, Anthony? Well, you know, nobody's been named yet, and oh. they just said that they want to do it. So, yeah, who would the potentials be? Um, there's a, a big company called Penn Gaming. That's a possibility. Um, or Penn National, actually, is, is what they're called. Uh, there's another company called Bally's. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, they're not connected with Bally's on the Strip. Right. But uh, they've been buying up properties. They recently bought the Tropicana. Somebody asked uh, in the comments last week if uh, the Tropicana was owned by Hilton. No, it's owned by a company called Bally's. Mm -hmm. And they've been on kind of a buying spree. Um, there's a possibility with uh, with the Indians, you know, another Indian um, operation, just okay. like San Manuel did with uh, the Palms. And then the one that you brought up to me, which would be right next door, Treasure Island, right? Yeah. I mean, that's Phil Ruffin, mm -hmm. who's got a lot of money, and he's always sort of coveted the Mirage. And there's, you know, there's an obvious synergy there between Treasure Island and the Mirage. So if I had to pick one, I mean, I think Ruffin is going gonna, is gonna to take a shot at it. All right. So, so you think he has the chutzpah to go do it and that, that you could walk from T.I. to Mirage and do something with well, that? You know, the thing is about Ruffin is he's a real uh, horse trader. Okay. And he's not going to do it unless he can get a good deal. I mean, okay. he's made some of the greatest deals in Vegas history, you know, buying and selling um, uh, different properties. Mm -hmm. And he's done really well there. So it, it would be interesting, you know, if he did. Um, if I had my choice on all of this, I think Bally's would be an interesting one because mm -hmm. I think the, that they're pretty aggressive. And, and again, I think that the Native American tribes uh, would, would make a good buyer as well. Okay. All right. And then don't rule out Penn Gaming. So. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and along those lines, you know, there's, uh, there's some, some news on what could happen with Caesars. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we'll talk to that in a, a, about that in a minute. Okay. You know, something that's going on with the World Series of Poker that could affect uh, what Caesars is going to sell. Well, and it seems to keep pointing back down toward uh, 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 Plant Hollywood. Hollywood. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Well, I was going to say, why don't we talk about the World Series of Poker real quick. Sure. Right now, there's only three people remaining in the World Series of Poker. In the main event. In the main event. Yeah, there'll be some, there have been a lot of uh, other tournaments up to here. There'll be several after. But the main event is already in operation. Um, we said last week that we'd give, uh, you know, final numbers, which we now have. Mm -hmm. Looks like uh, 6,650 entered, which is a pretty good total. Okay. Um, in It's 23% below 2019's 8,569, but uh, for coming back from the pandemic, that's pretty good. We've got um, $8 million for the winner. Okay. Um, and like we said, they've been, they've been playing it down, and uh, they're down to three. Okay. Now, out of those uh, final three, are there any big names, any recognizable names? No, there are no names that uh, that anybody recognizes, to be honest okay. with you. And, and what's been interesting about this tournament is that the big names were never in the hunt. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, early on, I guess one of the one of the uh, interesting parts of it was that Doyle Brunson played for mm -hmm. the first time in several years. Oh, wow. And I believe he made it to, to day two. And uh, one of our authors, Elke, a guy that goes by the name of Elke, was, uh, was doing well early, but... There was nobody close, I mean, coming down to this. And it's just, again, all the new players, all the new names. Yeah. Well, I remember in 2004 when Chris Moneymaker won. That was something that, like, really set uh, the World Series of Poker on fire because it just made you feel like you could be a guy who played a home game and then goes and wins the WSOP. Yeah, we actually did a book on that. It's called The Moneymaker Effect. Mm -hmm. And it talks about – it's actually a really good book that that didn't sell that well. But if you're interested in that, in that history mm -hmm. of how it went, it was sort of like an oral history mm -hmm. by – a, a, a real pro, a guy named Eric Raskin wrote it, and it's it's a good story about how MoneyMaker did it and and what went what went into that. So also, what we were talking about earlier is that this is going to be the last year for the WSOP to be played at the Rio. Yes, after um, after 16 years, mm -hmm. it's going to they're going to take it to the Strip. Okay. And you know we we talked earlier that's going to be as of next year. They said they're going to do it at uh, Bally's and Paris combined. So. You know, I was talking to some friends the other day, and they go, well, Caesar says they're going to sell a strip property, so it's not going to be Bally's or Paris, right? So that's what we, we were saying earlier. It points back again down the street to you know, Planet Hollywood. Planet Hollywood. Okay. One more thing about this. Um, at LasVegasAdvisor.com, Blair Rodman, mm -hmm. who wrote uh, our book Kill Phil about playing poker tournaments, wrote an amazing blog that we've just put up about 
his uh, history with the World Series. Mm -hmm. And Blair and I have been buddies forever. I was best man at his wedding, and, and we've been pals ever since You know, we both came to town mm -hmm. 40 years ago. And it's a really great read about what we witnessed each year in the World Series winners and who won and who they were and, and the stories behind it. Mm -hmm. You know, one of my favorites I just wrote about, there was a guy named Bill Smith when we first started. And a lot of people think that Bill Smith was a tremendous player, but he was only a tremendous player when he was drinking. Oh, okay. And, and so this is one of the few times that we yeah. saw a World Series champ just having, you know, they're all drinking water, they're all drinking yeah. sodas, whatever they're doing, yeah. and he would have Budweiser after Budweiser after Budweiser. We loved it. He's like the John Daly of poker. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. And then, you know, he, later Scotty Wynn was kind of kind of very much the same. But okay. uh, it's a great blog at, at LasVegasAdvisor.com. All right. So, uh, so check out that blog. And what year did Blair win his uh, bracelet? Oh man, I don't know. About 15 years ago. Okay. But, but Blair did win. Yeah, he won. He wasn't. It wasn't the main event, but he mm -hmm. won a big No Limit Hold'em tournament for over 700,000 in a gold bracelet. That's terrific. Okay, so check out that blog. All right, so Anthony, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, for the past 10 years or so, the Cosmo uh, during the winter time does a ice skating rink. Yes, uh, real ice. Real ice. Okay. Yeah. And it, it's um, it's their holiday tradition. They've done it. This is the 10th year running now. They do it up on the uh, third floor, I think it is, Boulevard Pool, right, where the pool over, overlooks the, the strip. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's free skating on real ice. They keep it cold. And it's, you know, it's, it's ice in the desert. And, uh, you know, skating is not my thing. I, I, I can't skate. Can you you're, skate? You're not, I can probably skate, but you're not going to see me there. No, I, I can't skate. And I, yeah. I, I, I don't get it. I, you know, I don't come to Vegas. I don't come to the desert to skate anyway. But I'll tell you, yeah. I, I hear it's fabulous. Yeah. And people really love it. Right. It's, uh, it's 30 bucks for an all-day skate. Uh, locals show local ID, and it's $20. Okay, that's a pretty good deal, uh, especially if you're a local. Okay, and then sticking with entertainment, uh, the Las Vegas Advisor just added a new show uh, to the top ten, and this is the Illuminate show at the Strat. Right, I Illuminate is what they call it. Okay, and it's uh, it's rare. We have the top ten values on at LasVegasAdvisor.com and in the mm -hmm. newsletter, and it's rare that we have a show. For years, the only show that was that ever could crack our top ten values was Matt King when he had a terrific deal down at Harris. Mm -hmm. And this one we have now put in the top 10 in the eight, eight or nine spot. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few reasons for this. First, let me explain the show. I think, well, the reason it's in the top 10 is that people come to Vegas and they want to see a show, mm -hmm. right? If you're going to be on vacation, it's like you got to have a buffet, right? You got to have a prime rib. Yep. You got to see a show. Yeah. And the show prices are just going up, just through the roof. I mean, you know, the first $100 show, we've mentioned this before, was Siegfried and Roy when they, we mentioned this last week, when they opened the Mirage. That's right. Now you almost cannot find a show with a ticket under $100. But the, the ticket on this one is like 64 bucks, mm -hmm. And that's for the cheap seats in the Strat. The cheap seats are okay for this show. We have a deal on our website at lasvegasadvisor.com through Groupon for 43 bucks. Not bad. And that's after all taxes and everything else. Forty-three okay. bucks for for a show, and this show was tremendous. You know, it's not a you know, it's not a juggler, it's not a comedian, it's just music and dance. But the stage is completely dark, and the the uh, performers are what in what's called black cloth, so you can't see them, mm -hmm. but they're illuminated with lights all over them. Interesting. And as they dance. There's all these different switches that they're doing. I mean, it's a choreo choreographic genius, what they do, where somebody's dancing with all the lights, and all of a sudden he doesn't have a head because the lights go off, right? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden he's got all you see are legs and arms. And it's, you know, to, to a lot of new uh, pop music, so it's, it's, a, it's an upbeat thing. It's, um, it's just a lot of fun. That sounds and, it. Yeah, and I mean, you know, the, at times they're flying through the air, and you, you assume they're on pulleys and levers and things like that, but they're not. What it is are the other cast members without their lights on. And you can't see them because the stage is dark. And they're picking them up and carrying them and throwing them around. And you can't really tell until, unless you look really close and then you kind of realize what's going on. Interesting. All right. Well, that's Illuminate. And uh, it's at the Strat. And yeah, I always say the Strat is actually, like, happening now. They've really updated it. The games are great at the Strat. Well, there's free um, parking there. And, yeah. you know, it's easy access. That's another thing. You hate going to a, a strip show where it's so hard to get in and you got to pay for parking, whatever, that you go right in here, easy access, right to the showroom, yep. and it's, it's a pretty cool place. The only thing is, don't buy cigarettes there. Mm -hmm. On the way out, we walked out. I was with uh, someone who smokes, and they yeah. went to get a cigarette, 17 bucks a pack. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, man. I, that sounds about right for Vegas, though. Any any strip cigarettes are probably... Sounds uh, pretty brutal. You know, right? Yeah, it does. I've never smoked a cigarette in my life, so I don't know. But, I mean, it sounds pretty brutal, 17 bucks. That, that is pretty expensive. Um, but moving on. Okay. And the question that everybody wants to know, Circa Survivor Football Competition. Anthony, are you still in the game? I am still in the game. And how are we going to do this when I'm out of the game? Are you going to ask me? And I'm going to go, no, Andrew, I'm not in anymore. I think, yeah, we're oh, going to have to have it, you know, or you're just, you know, going to take it to the end. I yeah. don't know. Well, give them the numbers. You check okay. the numbers, right? Here we go. I mean, I'm rooting for you. I think you've come this far. Okay, here are the numbers. Uh, more than 500 people eliminated this week. Over 60% of people eliminated. And there is 173 people remaining in this competition. Yeah, it was a huge week. I mean, we had the, we had the Colts, and uh, they squeaked through. I'll talk about that in a second. But the many several favorites lost outright. The Ravens lost. The Cardinals lost. The Buccaneers lost. The big one was the Steelers, mm -hmm. and the Steelers were most people had bet had uh, chosen the Steelers, and they tied the Lions. Mm -hmm. And um, a tie is a loss in Survivor. So we had the Colts. It looked easy. They were up by 17, and all of a sudden they were up by only three with a few minutes to play and ended up not going to OT and winning by six. Okay. So we were in. But interestingly, um, I, I really appreciated and, and uh, was impressed by one of the comments. Uh -huh. Somebody said, okay, uh, your entry is now worth $8,747. That was last week when there were 650 or so left. And he, this person was correct. Uh, what he was doing was making an equity assessment taking the $6 million first prize, dividing it by the number of players who are still in the contest, and that's what you call the equity analysis, and that tells you the value of that, of that ticket. So our, I mean, of that, um, of that uh, entry. So what we paid 1000 for was worth uh, over 8000 mm -hmm. Now, if you apply that same analysis, which is how pros do it, with 173 left, our $1,000 buy-in is now worth uh, 34682 Okay, so I guess the question is, are you going to take your ticket to eBay and sell it for, what, ten, fifteen thousand? 15000 Well, what you could do is, you know, th this is called expected value. Uh -huh. And you could sell it to a pro who's got a lot of money who wants to take the expected value and say, all right, you want to sell that for ten or 15000 I'll buy it because it's worth double or triple that. Mm -hmm. And there's actually, um, there's a website out there called PropSwap. You go to PropSwap.com, and they actually have these opportunities for people who want to lock in a profit and sell. Uh, we're not going to sell. I mean, you know, we, we, stick, we stick with it. We've got the best of it right now, and mm -hmm. we're going to stay with it. We're not going to peddle it. So PropSwap is an app that can be downloaded? Um, PropSwap is, is, I believe, it's just a website. Okay. So it's, I think it's PropSwap.com. Okay. So you go check it out, people who are interested in that. Um, another question that was asked is, uh, are we ever going to disclose? I always tell you afterwards who we had. Yeah. Are we going to talk about who we have? I can't do that because not because of strategy per se, but we don't know yet. You know, it is, it is a strategy to wait as long as you can to get mm -hmm. as much information as you can. Perfect example was the Steelers going down. Okay. Well, what happened was very close to the deadline of putting in your pick, it was announced that their quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger, was out with COVID. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, there were 250 people, 260 people who were stuck with the Steelers minus Ben Ross, Big Ben. And so we wait as long as we can, and we don't know who we're going to pick until we, we do it right before post. Okay. All right. So that's a good note for uh, people who are wondering and for people who are going to play next year. Yeah, strategy. You, know, you wait as long as you can so in case something crazy happens. Yep. And now it's the time of the show that I really love because we get to share this week's jackpot. Yeah, so this is a cute story. Yeah, this, this week's jackpot is really fun. Uh, it's from Don and Angela from Michigan. And it says, a couple months ago, my wife and I were heading to a wedding for our nephew. Uh, we were... We were on our way to the ceremony when we were about to pass the Gun Lake Casino. We looked at each other and we said, oh, what the hell, let's skip the ceremony, as we all know how that's supposed to go. I do, I do, you may kiss the bride, laugh out loud. Uh, we decided, <laughs> <laughs> we decided to put, to. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we decided to put a hundred bucks in each machine, and after about 15 minutes or so, they hit a royal for $8,000 on a triple play machine, and let me tell you that missing that wedding ceremony was the best thing that we did that day. Of course, we had to slip a few more Benjamins into the wedding envelope just to justify skipping the wedding ceremony, and it was all good. Yeah, the best part of this is the story. You know, I mean, okay, they played $2 double-double. Yeah. They got, you know, they were dealt three to a royal. They, they kept three. They got dealt two. 
Pow, 8K. But, you know, it's just kind of interesting how gambling can weave into fun. Yeah, you know? and I absolutely. Mean, they're, they're like, all right, we don't, need to, we don't need to go sit through it. We'll go to the reception. We don't need to be at the ceremony. Yeah. Let's go make 8K. Yeah, and I've been there before. Like, not necessarily going to a wedding, but just going somewhere and you pass a casino go, you know what? I got 20 I minutes, okay? I got 20 minutes to go. I know, you know? and how many times do you go, and, and I just feel destiny, and because I'm stopping, it's going to work, yeah. but, it, but it doesn't. Yeah, but, right, right. But, but it did this time, so that's I, I like that. That's neat. Right. Uh, so thanks for uh, jo- thanks to Don and Angela for sending that in. That's pretty awesome. Last but not least, everybody wants to know what's going on with the mask situation in Las Vegas. Any new updates? No. Um, another week goes by where very little has been said about it. Um, nothing from the governor, nothing about, you know, the mandate being changed. You're still supposed to wear them inside. Um, it seems, it feels like it's just, they're letting it cook down and slowly fade away. It's just going to cook down to the point where everyone goes like, oh, we don't have to wear them anymore. Okay, fine. You know, again, they're just not rigorous and vigorous about, you know, making you wear them, um, around. You just have to enter a building wearing them and usually you're able to take them off at some point. Yeah. And some, you know, it's, it's different everywhere. Some are more stringent. Um, but as of now, no, you just still have to wear masks. You don't have to show Vax proof, but you do have to wear a mask indoors. All right. Uh, and that's it for this week. Thank you for liking and subscribing and sending your, uh, big hits or small hits into the email address over here. And uh, we'll see you next week.